In this stage of the project, we're going to customize the layout. Specifically, we're going to start by downloading the images we're going to need for the project, changing the title of the index page, cleaning up the boilerplate a little bit, and also importing a Google font called Lotto. All right, first thing we need to do, let's delete the images that came with the skeleton boilerplate. We're going to get our images from the class website. There should be three of them. You need to go to the My First website unit page. And if you scroll down, right underneath the customizing the layout section, you'll see three images. Right click, save link as, and save these directly inside of your Bulldog Burritos images directory. Do that for each one. There's one image for the logo for Bulldog Burritos. There's one picture of two high schoolers eating huge burritos. And then there's what we call a fave icon. This is the little image that shows up on the browser tab. So when you're done, that's what you should see. Three images right there. Great job. Next, we're going to change the title of the index or home page to say Bulldog Burritos. The best burritos in town. We're also going to clean up this uh, boilerplate a little bit. Some of these uh, comment sections run a little bit long. We want to make this a little simpler. This, of course, doesn't affect the rendering of the page. It's just a uh, way to keep things just a little bit tighter and cleaner. OK, moving on. One way to make our pages look really great is to use Google Fonts. Google Fonts gets you access to countless numbers of open source web fonts. All you have to do is include a link to them in the head of your document, and then you can use any of the custom typefaces that Google creates. So we're going to get rid of the one they have in place, and we're going to put our link in. As you can see, we're using Lado. And we put that right underneath the comment section that says font. Now we're going to include jQuery, customize the skeleton style sheet, and we're going to create our own custom style sheet for overriding their styles and for creating our own. Remember, jQuery is a very powerful JavaScript library. Just include a script tag within the head of your document, and then you can use this library in your code. We don't currently have a script section. So we're going to put that right underneath the CSS section and just say scripts. And then include a link to the version of jQuery we want to use. I really like the default style that Skeleton gives us, but there are a couple things that I don't like. So I'm going to go to the skeleton.css style sheet and scroll down the page until you see the media queries. There's a media query that currently applies different style rules when the screen is 550 pixels or larger. I want you to change that to 750 pixels or larger. Every site is a little bit different in how it chooses to be responsive, and this is how I want to do this site. Devices larger than 750 pixels will apply the rules below. Now we need to create our own custom style sheet. New, cascading style sheet, and we're going to call it custom. This is where all of our customizations, when we override skeleton styles or create our own, get rid of the comment section. And I created a section called override baseline styles. 
and it had two different style rules currently. I wanted to style the body to use our Google font. I changed the font size, the height of the text, and its color. And then every element I changed to use a different uh, box sizing method. Later on in the video, I'll show you where you can get all of this code so that you don't have to type. Okay, having a custom style sheet is great, but we need to include it in our boilerplate so that the rules are applied. We're gonna create an extra line in the CSS section, and this is going to refer to the custom CSS file we just created. If you don't put this in the boilerplate, then your rules will not be included when the page is rendered. Make sure you save your document. So far, we've got two style rules. Make sure those are included in the index.html. Let's move on to creating the primary page layout, um, which will include a navigation bar. And at the end, I'll show you where you can get all the code for this project so you don't have to type it. Remember, Skeleton uses a 960 grid system, which means that there's an area that's 960 pixels wide at its maximum, and it's carved up into equal width sections. Um, some grid systems are 16 sections, some are 12. Skeleton is 12. Remember, you don't get the full space because there can be what were called gutters that are margin around each one of the sections. All right, let's start by removing the code under primary page layout that comes with a skeleton. We're gonna have a couple of sections, so we're gonna go ahead and comment those out. Start header, end header. We're gonna have start navigation, end navigation. Right now, we're just planning out our layout. Comments are a great way to stay organized and to remember what it is that you need to do. Let's create another set of comments for where our footer is gonna be. All right, let's make our header. We're gonna create a div, and that div is gonna have a class called band, and another class called header. We're gonna do the same thing for navigation, div, class, band, and give it another class, navigation. Let's do it one more time for the footer. It's gonna have the class band as well. and a class footer. All right, so these are gonna be our bands that go across the entire width of the page. Under each one of these divs, we need to create another div and give it a meaningful ID, in this case header, and then a class called container. Container's a class that's already defined by skeleton that allows us to contain other content inside this div, go ahead and create another div with class 12 columns. What this means is use the maximum 12 columns available in our 960 grid system. We're gonna do the exact same thing for band navigation. We're gonna give this div the ID navigation, and it will also have the class container because it will contain content as well. Nested beneath this div, we'll create another 12 column section, which will consume the entire span of the 960 grid. One more time, we're gonna do the same thing for the footer. Remember, we need a div with a meaningful ID, in this case footer, that has the class container and nested within this div is going to be the actual content. And we decide how long that content is by using different classes. Once again, this is gonna use the entire width, the maximum 12 columns. Okay, let's create a section for the content. The idea here is that we're gonna have many parts of the page that are the same, the header, the navigation, and the footer. But the only thing that's different between the pages is the content. 
So we're gonna go ahead and plumb out an area here with the ID content and a class container. It's within this div where the page's content will go and the page content is what changes. The other things, the header, navigation, footer, they stay the same. All right, let's save all our stuff. Let's run and see what this looks like. As you can see right now, there's nothing on the page. You can see your title, you can see the fav icon, the little red B. In order for this to work, we need to add to our custom CSS a site style section. And in that section, we are going to style these different bands. As you can see, each band, the header, the navigation, and the footer, they all have different background colors, a red, green, and gray, respectively. Let's go ahead and run it again. But as you can see, you still cannot see these bands. The reason why is because they have no dimension. Let's go back to our custom.css style sheet. We're gonna add some more styles. We're gonna add style to the header. It's gonna have some padding. We're gonna have style on the content and the footer. By adding padding and margin, this gives the divs dimension. So if we were to run the file now, we should be able to see at least the header and the footer and a content area that's blank. We don't see the navigation area yet because it doesn't have any dimensions to it. Okay. In the next step, we are going to add a logo to our header. Notice how I'm putting the tag within the div that says 12 columns. Remember, this is the div that spans the entire width of the 960 section. I'm going to need some style for this because that's how I'm actually going to include the image. Notice how under the header, I look for any H1 with the class logo. I give it some margin. And then I also give it a background which points to this Bulldog Burritos image. This is one way that you could include a header logo. Another way would be to use an IMG tag. I'm going to save that, run the project, and as you can see, my Bulldog Burritos logo is now in the header. Next thing, we're going to create our simple navigation. It's going to be an unordered list, and there's four different pages to this website. So I need four list items. Inside each list item, I'm going to have an anchor that the user can click on. These anchors are going to point to the four separate web pages that my project consists of. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this. Bulldog Burritos has a home page, a menu page, an about page, and a directions page. Okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. And as you can see, now there is an unordered list. But this isn't a very attractive navigation bar. We need to make some style changes which will make the navigation in line so it has that side-to-side -side feel so it doesn't go vertical. Take a moment to review some of these style rules. Each list item is in line and it floated to the left. Each anchor within those list items is inline block. This allows us to have the user click on any of the area around the anchor, not just the text. There's various other style we put on here, just personal preference. When you hover over the anchors, it will also change the background color and text color and the cursor will turn to a pointer. Let's test it out. As you can see, the navigation is now in line. When you hover over it, its style changes. But if you were to click on any of these links, they would be dead links because we've yet to create all four pages. So there you have it. Let's take a minute to talk about where you can get the code for today's project. GitHub is what I use to store my source code and all its revisions. 
I have what are called gists linked on the class website. When you click on those, you will see the complete source code for each stage in the project. For example, if you clicked on index.html, you would see the exact source code that you should have by the time you're done with this stage. Click on raw and there you have it. Source code that you can copy and paste at will. Every time I make a video at the end, it will have the complete source code for any of the files that needed to be changed. Excellent. Great job and on to the next video.